Well, hello, and thank you for joining us for our webinar, Accelerating Payments to Collect Faster and Smarter, the second webinar in our three-part Front Office of the Future series. I'm Adam Rubenfire, a content manager at Freesia, and I'll be moderating today's presentation. Today, we'll share how healthcare organizations are collecting more payments more quickly and with less staff outreach. Before we get started, I would just like to quickly uh, share some housekeeping notes. You can submit questions at any time using the Q&A widget at the top left-hand corner of your screen, and we'll get to as many questions as we have time for. In the resource widget on the left-hand side of your screen, you'll find a one-pager offering an overview of Freesia, a white paper offering best practices for patient payments, and a blog post uh, about why it's important to offer flexible payment options. If you have any technical difficulties, please click on the help widget. It has a question mark icon and covers common issues. And since it's always one of the most frequently asked questions, this session is being recorded and you'll receive a link to a recording by the end of the week. Our session today is gonna to start with a quick introduction of our panelists in Freesia. After that, we'll discuss how to improve the payments experience. And finally, we'll spend the majority of our time in a Q&A discussion with our guests. Speaking of our guests, I am so thrilled to introduce our speakers for today. Jessica Mackey is a pract is practice administrator at ENT Specialists in Novi, Michigan. She has been with the organization since 2007 as an active member of the Accent ENT Administrators community. Jeannie Patterson is clinical administrator application specialist, excuse me, at Midwest Center for Women's Healthcare in Illinois, where they have worked for 18 years. Jeannie's main responsibilities are managing Freesia, we love that, and command link software, and ensuring staff are up to date on training. It's wonderful to have you both here. Thanks for having us, Adam. All right. Before I begin the presentation, I'll just offer a few brief words about Freesia. Freesia is a technology company guided by our mission of creating a better, more engaging healthcare experience for patients providers and staff. We have real-time integration with all the leading EHRs and registration, scheduling and billing systems. We're a publicly traded company on the New York Stock Exchange, and we've been named the top-ranked patient intake company by the research and insights firm class for four years in a row. And our security and privacy efforts are recognized with the industry's top certifications. We're going to talk about some of those later. If you're interested in learning more about Freesia, you can request a consultation using the drop-down on the right-hand side of your screen or simply visit freesia.com. Now let's talk about payments. So collecting on patient balances can be a costly challenge. I, I think Jessica and Jeannie could speak to that um, and we're gonna have them speak to that uh, you know, later in the webinar. Um, it takes a significant amount of staff time and money and other resources. Healthcare organizations you know, that are working in kind of the traditional, sometimes antiquated processes for payments are often mailing more than three statements to try to get patients to, to, to pay off their balance. And they're often doing so over a long period of time. That really adds up. It's not just about mailings. Staff are calling patients too, trying to get them to pay their balances, which really takes away from other important tasks, including interacting with patients in the office, which you know is, I think why a lot of staff get into their roles. So, so far providers have really taken a get what you can approach. And most only expect to collect 50 to 70% of what they're owed once the visit occurs. Uh, you know, they're spending a lot of time collecting on balances and th that result isn't really as good as it should be. We want, we should collect 100% of what we're owed. So ultimately when patients aren't paying their bills on time, cash flow isn't consistent and that makes it hard to make sound business decisions. So how do we fix that? How do we get patients to pay their bills faster without asking staff to chase them down? Well, it starts with taking the payment experience online. A digital payment experience, you know, that takes the burden off your staff and it gives patients the convenience that they expect, that they're frankly getting from other service industries. A recent Freesia survey shows that patients want an online payment experience. It showed us that 70% of patients said that they would likely make payments online if they were given the option. So let's walk through what that would look like and how it helps patients and staff. So before the visit, eligibility and benefits verification is a crucial first step, right? Automated EMB verification, it means that less staff time is spent on the phone, fewer costly denials, and the opportunity to collect copays and deductibles before the visit. Uh, plus, when patients complete intake before the visit, you can take that opportunity to have them make a payment right then and there. Get it out of the way and, and know that you've got that 
uh, balance at least partially taken care of, if not fully. Uh, of course, we also want to make sure we have the ability to collect payments at the point of service in case there are incidental charges or somebody simply prefers to pay in the office. That's all right. And after the visit, there are a number of great ways to collect. Patients can keep a card on file, enroll in automated payments. Um, you know, these things keep the bill top of mind. Um, and we can do that also with regular automated payment reminders via email and text message to encourage patients to pay their balance, but they're automated. So we're not burdening staff to, to make those calls or manually email patients. Uh, again, these are things we can't really do without burdening staff if this process isn't digitized. Plus, the more comfortable we make payment, excuse me, the more comfortable we make patients feel in this process, the more likely we are able to reliably collect on their balance. Yeah, that's, this is about access. Financial conversations require discretion. When patients can set up payment plans digitally without speaking to staff, they're better equipped to pay down their balance in a schedule that works for them on their own terms and less worried about disclosing their financial situation to your staff, who, frankly, I think aren't always comfortable having those conversations either. Um, so all of these features together have the aim of ensuring that practices are, and, and other types of healthcare organizations are collecting payments as early and consistently as possible during that patient journey so that we're not left with lingering balances. Finally, before we talk to our panelists, I just want to talk about convenience and security. In that survey that I mentioned earlier, patients who are skeptical of technology said they'd be more comfortable if their healthcare organization offered easy to use tools and support and prioritize privacy and security. Our survey told us that about 86% of patients are comfortable managing their healthcare online uh, using technology. Um, but 14% you know, is not a small number of people. Um, and we wanna serve them too, because uh, there are patients either way. Um, so how can we make it uh, easier? Well, mobile payment services like Apple Pay and Google Pay make it easy for patients to quickly pay. Makes them less likely to ban the page, more likely that you'll be able to collect their payment. Um, but more than that, I would say, if we make it easy to actually get to this payment, uh, to, this, to this checkout process, um, by not requiring an app or login, you know, that's really what's going to help us make this process easier. Um, it's because really an app, a portal, or a login, um, you know, a username and a password are just another obstacle in the way of your organization getting paid. Um, along the same lines, we think the payment process should be a one-page checkout. That reduces abandonment, increases collection rates, speeds up the entire process. And finally, the other thing that, that, patients have told us that they care about, especially if they're um, less comfortable with technology, is privacy and security. So you got to make sure your vendor partners uh, for these types of digital tools comply with strict regulatory standards. So the customers are not just assured by you, but also by reputable third-party organizations. That should include PCI validation with tokenization and encryption for payments. So that's an industry payment standard. And certification by comprehensive security compliance frameworks like High Trust and SOC 2. Those demonstrate your commitment to security and confidentiality. It shows you've done so, you have a history of doing so, frankly. So uh, those are really important things that I wanna emphasize. But I really wanna spend the rest of the time talking to our panelists about their experience, about how they're using technology. Um, so I'm just you know, beyond thrilled uh, to be talking to Jessica and Jeannie. Um, and I would love um, to start um, with them, but, but before I get to introductions, I would just say, audience, if you have questions, send them via the webinar console. If we don't get them to them today, if we don't answer your question, we, you know, we can follow up. Um, you know, we, we would love to make sure that we are getting your questions answered. Um, so I'd love to start by asking our panelists to share a little bit about their practices and the patients they serve. So Jessica, can you start? Uh, just let us know a little bit about um, your practice and, and who you serve. Absolutely. Thanks, Adam. Happy to be here today. Um, we are a private practice ENT group in Michigan. I have six ENT providers, five audiologists, 30 staff, and we have three office locations. So we are a very, very busy office. And we treat all ages. So we see newborns, geriatrics, and everyone in between. Excellent. Jeannie? We are a pretty big practice as well. Um, we have over 50 providers and 15 locations and our specialty is OB-GYN. 
So we see from minors to adults, and it's just really cool to watch a family progress. Like we'll see the mom and the daughter. So that's pretty cool. Amazing. Yeah. I, I, I think we talk a lot about, uh, you know, kind of um, enabling an experience, you know, I, I think with payments, we're often talking about the, the parents or adults, right? Um, but um, all of this, you know, you both are intake users as well. And all of this, you know, boils down to how do we make an experience that, that, that is customized to every patient. So I love that. Great to hear from both of you on that. You know, both of you, um, when we've talked before this webinar, have told me you faced um, some pretty significant staffing challenges. And I know you're not alone in that. I know um, a lot of other folks in our audience have probably been there, done that, maybe still doing that probably. Um, so uh, what has that been like? And how are you using, you know, how are digital payments? Um, how is that helping you support your staff and alleviate burnout, taking some of these manual tasks away from, uh, off of their plates so they can focus you know, on other things and, and frankly not burn out. Jessica, can we start with you? Yeah, so the entire medical field has been through quite the whirlwind over the past few years. I'm sure Jeannie can relate to that. Definitely. There has been a high turnover volume and we have lost staff for various reasons. So uh, having this tool through Freesia to allow them to have something that helps them do their job, not only making their job easier, but also more efficient overall has been such a huge implementation for our practice. It's just been such a great thing to have such a good tool to have, because if we are short staffed, if someone is ill or a family member is ill and they're not able to, to come to work that day, it's almost like they have not another coworker, but just another resource that they can lean on and rely on that causes them to not feel like the office is falling apart because one person is unable to make it in that day. Sure, yeah. Jeannie, what about you? Definitely agree. Um, we were really hit with the pandemic and being short staffed and trying to find new people. It was definitely a struggle and getting creative of trying to get people in the door. So I totally agree with Jessica. That's great, that's great. And, and Jeannie, you, you have multiple locations, right? Yes. There's, so do you find that um, if you're like short staffed at one location, you can, it, like it, it, being digital, it, it kind of helps you spread the, the work a little bit better? It does. However, each location kind of works independently. So unfortunately, okay. we can't like share the workload if we do have a lot of people out. So but you're cross training people and yeah. it helps them. Yeah. OK, great. We're yeah. set up a little bit differently where we have three locations, but everything is integrated between the locations. Oh, so it wow. makes it very easy for, OK, no via short staff today. I need my Brighton office to pick up A, B and C. Um, yeah. I'm sure it's a little bit harder with 15 locations, yes. I can't imagine, <laughs> but with our three platforms, it's having a digital platform allows for more integration and more crossing activities and allowing others to help it just promotes teamwork. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. Yeah. And I imagine, you know, I think one of the things we talk about is as practices acquire other practices or integrate or, or merge. Um, that, um, you know, it, it sometimes, although there's sometimes a, you know, messy process of doing that eventually, you know, being on the same, on the same wavelength, being on the same board can really help with that. So, yeah. Well, great. Uh, Jessica, one of the things, you know, that we, that we're frequently asked about is how we increasing, how we collect on these increasingly large balances that patients are carrying often because of high deductible plans, but there can be any number of reasons that we have high balances. Can you talk about how you're offering payment plans to help with that, the, the response you've gotten um, from, you know, from patients and staff? Yeah, so we have received a really positive response on payment plans. We do a lot of surgeries. We do a lot of in-office procedures and we have everything from high deductible plans to coinsurances to everything else the insurance companies can come up with to fill out. And when you offer, when a patient is one made aware of their balance before even walking in the door, they don't have to have that moment of shock at the front desk in front of an audience that, oh my gosh, I have a $500 balance. 
But not only that, now we're offering these kind of streamlined payment plans where you might not have $500 on a Tuesday in the middle of the month, and that's okay. And you don't have to have an awkward conversation to explain it. You can simply, through your check-in process, say, you know what, I want to make this amount each month and I can make it on this day. And it's just been really, really positive for both patients and front desk, because as you said before, it's not always a comfortable conversation to have. Yeah. Have your, have your staff like said to you, like, oh, I, I, I just, I, I'm ready. To, like, I, I appreciate that. I'm not, you know, having these conversations. Yes. And because the patients are taking care of it before they even walk through the door for their appointment. Yeah. So it just completely alleviates that portion of check-in process. And instead the check-in process can look more like, good afternoon, Mrs. Jones. How are you feeling today? We're happy to see you again. And it's not, oh my gosh, we have a patient coming in with a huge balance. Now we have to have a very uncomfortable conversation. Yeah. Yeah. In the middle Jeannie, of what the about, room. yeah, go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> I was going to say uncomfortable conversation in the middle of the waiting room. Yes. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Jeannie, I, I think, you know, you, you've talked about payment plans and that you've also mentioned how kind of a lot of your patients are big plans or big fans, excuse me. Um, I'm just, I'm thrilled about payment plans. So I'm just I'm mixing so up excited. my words here. Um, but you've said, you know, that your patients are really uh, excited about kind of card on file and automated payments as well. Can you talk about some of the feedback you've gotten on that and also how it's helped your staff, um, you know, yeah. yeah, I think in this day and age, people like options. So the patients were thrilled when they have options. I know a couple of our care centers have actually um, marked a minimum payment as well. So that has been really helpful to, to give patients an option at, for a starting point to pay versus here you go, you have a $5,000 bill, <laughs> pay it all at once. So that's been pretty cool. And staff definitely likes the fact that they can send a chat, they can send an email or text, and it alleviates having to be on the phone and checking in and also checking out patients. So it's less chaos, I would say. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think, I think one of the things you said to me was that uh, you haven't seen your staff smile, you know, bigger, like, I mean, right. Tell me a little bit about like how it makes your staff like feel and, and why that's important to you. Cause I think, I think, you know, it's, it's one thing to make an efficiency decision. It's another thing to do something that alleviates burnout. And I know that's a, a big part of what you're focused on in your role. Yes, I definitely am. I'm a big advocate for my front desk. So anytime that I can help them, I will. But yes, they are relieved. It has helped them. And I think it gives them the confidence to know that the patient on their end has received the information and they also can view it. So it's not uncomfortable. Because I feel like a lot of times when patients come in, the front desk isn't really trained to look at EOBs or look at co-insurance. So they're struggling. The patient is frustrated. And at that point, nobody's paying. So, yeah, yeah, no, that, that that's great. I, you know, I think one of the things that we, you know, talk about a lot is, is, you know, this is more than just getting paid. It's about, it's about, it's about your relationship with the patient. Um, so, you know, I, I really, you know, Jessica, what I would love to talk to you is just, I mean, we talked a little bit about the feedback you've gotten from uh, patients. Um, have you heard any feedback as far as like from patients on the idea of, um, you know, uh, the, the fact that they're able to pay you more easily, um, that it's not just about like kind of that discussion, but about the, the, the features and the card on file. Have you gotten um, any feedback about that? Yes, it's it. We've gotten a lot of positive feedback on the payment plans and how streamlined everything is. The biggest thing for some of our patients, especially our older population, is the security factor. Is this mm -hmm. safe? Is this secure? Is my information going anywhere? And my front desk is great at providing that reassurance for patients. But once they have that, they like the fact that they no longer have to come in and fill out a whole book. Yeah. <laughs> they can simply come in and say hi to the front desk and sit down and their, their check-in is done. They're ready to go back for the physician right away. Yeah. Je Je Jeannie, we spent a lot of time talking about like training the trainers, right? Like Jessica, what you just said, like, um, and, 
I mean, d- d- how do you talk to staff about whether it's Freesia or other technologies you use? How do you talk to staff about how to, I don't want to say sell the technology, but, but to educate patients about why they're doing it? Uh, I, I mean, because I, I imagine like as somebody who works in clinical technology at your practice, that's, that's pretty important of articulating and aligning staff with like why we're doing this. Because ultimately we want to make the patient feel comfortable and we want easy processes. So I stress that a lot to the staff and also knowing about the product themselves. Like I said, knowledge equals confidence. So the more they know about Freesia and everything else, it's better that they can talk to the patients. That's great. That's great. So, Just to add to oh, that, yeah. Adam, Please. It's, so when staff, get, for the front desk especially, I don't think many people realize how many different roles they play at that front desk and how challenging. I always say the front desk is the most challenging position in a medical office and you are the face and the door to the practice. So it's a really tough position and anything you can implement into the front desk to make their job easier. At the end of the day, the reason they get into the healthcare field is because they want to help people. So really with that mindset, they kind of sell the technology on their own because one, it makes their job easier, but two, they know that it's ultimately benefiting the patient, which is what they're all there to do. Sure, sure. And I mean, Jessica, one of the things you talked about is, yeah, the technology is important, but there's a scripting component to this too. Um, t- can you talk a little bit about that? Just about how how you do train your staff, like w- the kinds of phrasing that you encourage to 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 help patients feel comfortable, um, but while still like kind of making sure you're getting done what you're trying to do. Yeah, so we provide, um, like Jeannie said, I mean, knowledge is confidence, and the more information you provide your staff, the better you're equipping them to do their job. So it's about key phrases instead of, would you like to pay your balance today? It's how would you like to pay your balance today? And it's just focusing on little words like that, that can really make a difference. Because if you ask me, would I like to pay? No, no, I would not. (laughs) But how would you like to pay today? It's those key phrases that kind of change the dynamic of the conversation. Great. Yeah, Jeannie, anything to add on that just as far as kind of the how you encourage staff to interface with technology? No, I completely agree with Jessica. Definitely, it is all about the scripting. That's great. Excellent. I'll just ask one more question to y'all. You know, if there's someone in our audience who's having trouble collecting on high balances or whose staff seem stretched thin, I would just ask, what is your like kind of one piece of advice? What should they prioritize when it comes to script, uh, excuse me, when it comes to payments? Um, and, and, and really, like, wh- where do they start their journey? Because I think both of you have kind of really perfected um, this process and, and strive to make sure that it is, you know, uh, aligning with your mission and, 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 and your business objectives. So, um, Jeannie, I'll start with you. What, what one piece of advice would you give to somebody who's trying to um, solve for these issues? I would definitely talk to your Freesia client support manager and let them know the issues that you're kind of having and brainstorm with them because that's how we found out about payment assurance. That's how we were able to set up our auto in office mobile that sends like a financial um, interview only. So that way the patient has another option to set up a payment plan or pay that balance. I think that's a great point. Like working with your vendor to make sure that you're customizing it, that you're not, I, I think some of the challenges that we see with uh, technology, some of the technologies out there is they may not be customizable. So you're settling for, you know, kind of a standard option or standard um, offering. So that's great. That's awesome. And I, I'll just add that if you're not already a Freesia client, that those are the kinds of things that kind of can be discussed, um, you know, and, and talked through kind of in the, um, in the process with some of our representatives um, prior to becoming a client. Um, Jessica, what what would your like one piece of advice be? What would you emphasize to someone who's at the beginning of their digital payments journey? Definitely having that conversation at check-in and making patients aware that your copay is due at time of service. That's one of the big ones that if you don't collect it at check-in, you may never see it. 
And then following up with those patients that if you have something like Frisia in place, it's they've been made aware of the balance. So if they want to talk to staff, making sure you have that follow-up conversation, asking them what their questions might be. Did they receive their EOB? Do they understand their charges? And what my front desk does is front desk and billing are different. So they'll they'll redirect, they'll get a biller on the phone and say, okay, let's go over this bill. What questions do you have for me and how can I answer them? Excellent. Great. Well, thank you so much to you both. Uh, that's all the time we have for today. Um, but um, really just I really appreciate hearing, hearing about your experiences. Um, thank you, Jessica and Jeannie for joining us. This was wonderful. If we didn't get to your question in the chat, or if you have any questions about Frisia, please don't hesitate to request a consultation using the form on the right hand side of your screen. We'd love to be in touch. And if you liked this webinar, please sign up for a third and final webinar in the front office of the future series, Modernizing Intake and Reducing Staff Burden, taking place at 1 p.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific on November 2nd. A link to register is located in the resource widget on the left-hand side of your screen. That might be your right, who knows? Uh, <laughs> but have a great day, everyone. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jessica and Jeannie. Thank you. Thank you.